Okay, so I, um, I hope that we can start now. <laughs> we had kind of a false start before. <laughs> uh, so hi, everyone, and welcome very much for joining me uh, in this session that we're going to talk about Hyperledger Abasive, the project that we have been working on for quite a while now. Um, let me quickly start introducing myself. Um, my name is Lucas, and I've, uh, I work for Consensus. And I've been uh, working uh, on the BASU project for a little bit over than three years now. During this time, I've been mostly focused on the node and account permissioning features and uh, the private transactions that we offer. So overall, um, all the I have probably um, at least helped with uh, the design or something like that. Uh, and I also work on some of the other complementary projects like ETH Signer or, or Orion, for those of you who uh, maybe heard about them before. Um, you probably, yeah, you saw me on, you know, a Rocket Chat or somewhere on the internet talking about it. <laughs> so moving on to the next slide, um, I just want to, you know, take a quick look at this beautiful Hyperledger greenhouse with you, just so we can see where Hyperledger Basu sits with its other with other projects, uh, Hyperledger projects here. Uh, so Basu is a uh, Ethereum client, so you can see that it's sitting right there in this top layer with its other distributed ledger siblings. Um, I, I, the reason I'm, I'm bringing it here is just uh, so we can be clear of where, in, you know, in this uh, ecosystem, BASU fits. Uh, and before I talk a little bit more about BASU, I just want to uh, bring to your attention that we have a Q&A tab uh, on, on this platform. So if you have any questions, I'll, I'll do my best to answer as many as I can uh, in the end of the presentation. Okay, cool. Moving on. Yeah, so let's talk about what is Hyperledger Basu and why did we decide to create uh, yet another Ethereum client? So I guess if you go back um, a few years from now, um, the scenario for Ethereum was a little bit different. So Ethereum was thriving as a blockchain technology. Um, everyone was talking about it. Um, but one thing that we noticed is that a lot of companies that wanted to start using uh, blockchain, more specifically wanted to start to use Ethereum, um, realized that the, the options for you know, clients and the technology around it wasn't quite ideal. So everything from like the licenses that weren't really enterprise friendly um, or from the, you know, the the lack of professional support offerings, and even, um, I guess, like the tooling around um, Ethereum wasn't really great. Um, so when we saw this, this gap, we decided that um, that was something that we could do. <laughs> and well, hopefully uh, we have been improving in this area. Um, you guys like, can let me know if we are not. But um, one of the reasons that, uh, one of the things that we did with, uh, with um, Besu was uh, the license choice. We decided to uh, use Apache license, which means that not only um, uh, anyone is free to use the software, but you can, if you have the expertise, you can even jump in and implement, um, extend this, the solution for yourself. You know, no strings attached. The license is completely open uh, for people to use. And also, when uh, on the language of choice, we ended, we ended up going with Java. So in Hyperledger Basu is a, Java uh, uh, client that was implemented in Java. And the reason is that not only it's uh, a language that is pretty disseminated in the industry, it's really easy to find Java developers, which is good um, for maintaining the client, but also it's a language that has a lot of penetration on you know, established companies and enterprises. Um, I, I like to say that, you know, companies are not afraid of using Java <laughs> as, some, as opposed to some other languages, especially newer languages. Um, yeah, okay, so let's, let's move to the next, um, to on the next slide. So um, I just wanna highlight a few of the, the features that Besu uh, brings to the table. Um, one, I think um, it's probably important that I start highlighting that Besu, it's a Ethereum client that can be used in public and private networks. So not only that, but keeping BASU compatible with the public mainnet, which is you know, the open uh, Ethereum network that anyone can use, is one of the top priorities on our development. So everything that we introduce, we, we 
we, we, we want to make sure that we're not breaking compatibility with mainnet because we really believe that um, the Ethereum community brings a lot of value to the ecosystem. And by implementing a client that doesn't connect to, to these uh, public uh, networks, we're just missing out on a lot of things. Um, some other features that we bring uh, is a uh, fine-grained permissioning option. So when I'm talking about permissioning here, I'm talking about node and accounts permissioning. Node permissioning means that you have some, uh, some more control over the topology of your network. Uh, not not uh, limited to using firewalls, but you can use rules and even on-chain rules to manage who, um, what nodes are uh, allowed to connect to, to your network. And you, you, by using that, you can uh, have a, a more specific um, topology, but also uh, account permissioning where you have control of what accounts or you know what entities are allowed to modify your network or modify your state, uh, send, you know, deploy contracts, send transactions, transfer um, um, I just got um, a message on the chat saying that I'm muted. I hope everyone can hear me. Can we, can we double check that you all can all hear me or I'm just going to wait. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, perfect. <laughs> we already had a, a false start at the beginning. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm not talking for <laughs> a lot of a lot of time with no one hearing me. Awesome. Cool. Let's uh, keep going. So um, another thing that uh, Basu brings to the table is the opportunity of sending private transactions. For those of you uh, familiar with uh, blockchain and how it works, uh, in a standard uh, blockchain, all uh, transactions uh, are public. Everyone can see everything. But with Besu, you have the option of using uh, private transactions. So we've created a, uh, a feature that allows you to distribute private transactions uh, to other participants off chain, and they are all encrypted. And we use the chain to uh, pretty much synchronize those transactions in a way that um, we, everyone will execute the private transaction at the same time, but it doesn't leak any of the information about the private transaction. So for the participants that are part of you know a private a privacy group, you you all be able to see the private transaction. And you know, uh, for example, if you're deploying a contract, everyone in the privacy group has access to that contract. But for everyone else, it's just a transaction in the network. They don't have any information about it. Um, more on the um, enterprise side of things uh, for deployment and stability, we put a lot of efforts to make sure that BASU is uh, as stable as we can make it. We, we, we run a lot of test networks on mainnet and some private networks to make sure that every version that we release won't crash. <laughs> we, want, we, we want to make sure that your network won't be you know, down because of BASU. BASU is supposed to, you know, blockchain, as a distributed system is supposed to be 24 by 7 online. And we want to make sure that you know, our nodes um, are up to the task. And also, we, we provide a lot of um, deployment tools and monitoring options. So um, that's another thing that we noticed a few years ago that was lacking on most clients. So you know, out of the box, Besu has all the framework for uh, publishing. You know, uh, stats about the system. You, you can even introduce new metrics if you want. So it's uh, it's really really versatile for those um, for those uh, those features. Um, okay, I think I probably need to go a bit quicker now. <laughs> um, okay, um, quickly just talking about a few uh, use cases. And the main reason that I'm bringing this slide here is just to highlight that Besu is not supposed to be used for one specific use case. It's actually built with all use cases in mind, if that makes sense. Uh, um, Ethereum as a platform with its smart contracts allow for pretty much any kind of solution, any kind of software that you can, you know, you can run on, on, on the blockchain. And um, Besu is it's pretty much agnostic in terms of what you're doing. So we have everything from you know all funds and it's a fund management and disbursement solution uh, using Besu. Um, we have Postalian using um, Besu in their network for uh, customer loyalty programs. 
and even some blockchain networks, which are pretty much providing um, a network as some kind of service for other entities to use. So Lockchain is a good example where they have a permission network. And I believe the last time that I've checked, they had more than 100 nodes uh, in the network and 50 plus companies using that network, which, which is really good. And they all running best nodes. Uh, so yeah, this is here just as an example of what we can um, what we can expect from other uh, companies using mess. Okay, um, and here I just want to quickly touch on the roadmap. So where so I, I've I've been talking a lot about what Besu you know did and what it does, but I also want to talk about what Besu will do and what we have been working on. So the first one that I want to highlight is the high availability and disaster recovery features. So as I said, we put a lot of effort to make sure that Besu is as stable as it can be. And not only that, but even though if the worst happens, we, we need to make sure that we have uh, the software can um, support uh, disaster recovery solutions so you are never offline. The other really interesting feature, and unfortunately that's the one that I can probably least talk about because I haven't been involved a lot on this implementation, but it's the Interledger integration. So that's something that a lot of, um, we have heard a lot of people uh, asking for. And we have a team working on this integration between Hyperledger Besu and Hyperledger Fabric, for example, uh, using the Atomic Swaps API. Um, as I said, that's not my 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 um, expertise, so um, hopefully no hard questions about this uh, at the end. <laughs> and the third one that is probably one that if you have been uh, around the Ethereum ecosystem, you heard before is what we're calling the ETH1, ETH2 merge. So basically, Ethereum, um, the Ethereum community is working on this new Ethereum 2 version that is supposed to um, fix a lot of the current limitations on Ethereum 1. And when that happens, um, it's uh, expected that the Ethereum 1 execution layer, the EVM, will become the S2 um, execution engine. And basically, we are already, you know, uh, looking at what we can do in BESU to make sure that this is uh, this uh, transition happens seamlessly, seamlessly, I can't really say that word, <laughs> and make sure that we can, uh, BESU will fulfill this uh, role as an execution engine for Ethereum 2. Um, and yeah, so that's, uh, that's an, an, another thing that I just wanna highlight with everyone. Unfortunately, this session is really, really short, so 15 minutes is not enough for me to just, you know, show um, you uh, all the features and, uh, get get you guys to do uh, anything um, but yeah we we have a lot of uh, quick starts and uh, on 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 the website so if you go to besu.hyperledger.org on the quick starts you're going to see a lot of options for you know getting your hands dirty with besu um, i recommend you yeah doing the private network setup and then you can you know um, take a look and have a chance of playing with besu yourself and i'm sorry if i'm going quickly just because i want to leave time for some of the questions um, you, yep, we are on Rocket Chat, so we can talk. Um, or you, you can find us in Rocket Chat if you need uh, help with anything you want to talk with us. If you want to start implementing or actually working on Basu on the code base, uh, we find us on GitHub. And we also recommend anyone that wants to take the next step to check out the Basu Essentials course. Uh, the link's in, in the presentation, and I believe the presentation is going to be available after this session. Whew, okay, that's everything that I had to share. I'm sorry that I had to run at the end. Um, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to uh, 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 me talking about Besu. I'm really excited with this project. I'll quickly go to the Q&A to make sure that we have uh, time for a few questions. Let me close this. Um, okay, so um, I have one question here. How do you compare uh, Geth with Besu? Um, that's a really good question. I think, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, the main difference, Geth is the Go implementation of, of uh, Ethereum. So it's an Ethereum client implemented in Go. And Besu is almost like the standard client for Ethereum when it comes to, to public Ethereum. So you can see Besu as a, and I don't mean that in a negative way for Geth, but Besu is almost like a superset of Geth because we provide all everything that Geth provides in terms of public Ethereum support, but we also have this extra layer of enterprise features like privacy, permissioning, uh, you know, um, um, support, monitoring, and all, all, all of that. 
So hopefully, so hopefully that uh, answers your questions. Another one here, does best to support private key management? That's a, a, another really interesting question. So I think, I'm not sure, so I'm I'm assuming that you are asking about the node key. So if Bassum, you know, keeps keeps maintains the, the keys for accounts as part of the node. If that's your question, the answer is no. Bassum doesn't maintain keep track of your um, account keys, and that was a deliberate decision on design because we wanted to keep things separate. Uh, there is a um, another project that's called It's Signer that is supposed to work as your wallet. So I guess that's probably another uh, quick, um, another uh, difference between Geth and Besu because Geth has a wallet embedded as part of the node, you know, you, you, everything in one uh, software. Uh, we decided to separate them for mostly because of security. Most enterprises, yeah, if you ask InfoSec, they will hate the idea of having all the keys sitting in the same place, the same server. <laughs> that was the main reason. Um, okay, cool. I think we are at time not sure if there are any other questions but i think that's probably going to be everything for today again thank you very much for the time thank you very much for um showing up and if you yeah if you have any questions or anything you can find us on rocket chat uh we are also uh, all around hyperledger global forum so you can find us thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the event